Hey, yo, what's up? Today I will talk about phantom breaking. Yes, I actually wanted to make this video for a very long time, but now it's time to talk about the Tesla phantom breaking. So um, for you guys who don't know, uh, Tesla is very high tech. It has all this autopilot stuff and the adaptive cruise control. And well, okay, let me explain a little bit. All the pilot is actually a set of uh, auto autonomous features. Uh, you have the auto steer that steers the car left and right uh, to keep it in the lane or even uh, lane change. Uh, well, that's actually called auto lane change. And then you have the adaptive cruise control that many cars nowadays also have. And then when you enable um, when you enable all the pilot, you enable uh, many of these uh, together. So auto steer and adaptive cruise control. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we actually have to blame the adaptive cruise control uh, for this case because um, there was a chain collision in Trøndelag uh, recently. It's in, it's, or at least it's in the news, in, in the national news in Norway. I think it hasn't spread throughout the world yet, but because it's a Tesla that was involved in an accident, or actually, no, no, actually, technically it was a Tesla that caused the accident. Well, that's what the, at least the journalists want you to believe. Then it's going to be worldwide news soon. Yes, just mark my word. Uh, so I, I tried to use uh, some kind of trans, uh, translation here, but I don't know what the heck, why it's not working. Um, it's not in Nynorsk, no. Uh, but anyway, as I will just show you guys. Um, so it says that Tesla on autopilot uh, suddenly break, uh, which resulted in a chain reaction on E6 in Vardar. Vardar! Um, and... When I look at this, you know what, when, once, I, I talk about this before, that I have photographic memory. Uh, when I look at this picture, and I, okay, I'm also, well, a little bit of tip that it was Vardar, uh, Vardar, uh, then I, I, I had a, a hint, a hunch of whatever, where it could be. Um, and then I look on Google Maps, and I know this place. I've been, I passed here at least 50 times, okay, at least 20, 30 times here. And I'm going to show you something. Um, when I, we just keep, keep driving or keep walking, right? Okay. To, until around here ish. I know this stretch. Okay. Okay. Look there. Uh, there's a, there's a garage or something. Let me just go a little bit closer. Yeah. Okay. And then we look at this one. That's it. That's a spot. <laughs> I don't know how the heck I figure out that that's a spot. Uh, but I want to show you here on Google Maps um, uh, the, whole, the surrounding because that's, they, they don't talk about it. They don't show it on the, in the news. So um, let me try to replicate what happened. Okay, we have to kind of walk a little bit this way. You see that we have a long stretch here with overtaking possibilities. Uh, but this stretch is also very uh, heavily trafficked at some times. And actually, huh, you can kind of see it here uh, in the... What is this? Oh, we have... Oh, we have campers. Yes, are we, this is summer. This is so typical Norwegian shit going on. The Germans, they're inv invading uh, Norway in summer and they drive far under the speed limit. And then you have people like, this is, this is a very co common scenario. So um, anyway, so what happens was that the Tesla was driving on that lane. It was driving on this direction. And there, were, um, uh, there was a, a, a van behind it and then uh, a truck, not that truck, that's a rescue truck. So uh, let me uh, summarize, I mean, let me try to, uh, to summarize what happened. Uh, they say that, okay, three vehicles, yes, like I mentioned, three vehicles were involved, uh, no, no, per, uh, no harm done to the people at least. Um, um, and then it says that uh, a car on autopilot and some, uh, how do you put it, hindering it? They, they say obstacle in the, on the road was, uh, that, that caused the chain collision. That's incorrect. My claim is that that's incorrect. Okay, let me just uh, tell you what they say. Um, seems like, okay, they see here, this is important. There seems to be a truck in, in, the, on, the, in the opposite direction. And then a Tesla uh, and the north, yeah, uh, northbound was on all pilot. And then the car suddenly uh, registered that there was some, some kind of obstacle on the road and then put on full brake 
bealing twice. I don't know what the twice stop, but uh, something like it just stopped, and then right after it was um, uh, hit from behind. And in because the car was an autopilot, then it, uh, okay, this is okay because the car was an autopilot. The driver didn't get control over the vehicle until it was at complete stop. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. 100% bullshit. The worst bullshit ever. This is, that's what triggered me to make this video because I have used autopilot a lot. Yes, a lot, a whole shit lot. Um, the phantom braking that I wanted to make a video about. Okay, I have to explain to you guys what phantom braking is. Um, to, like I mentioned, you know, we have auto steer and, and adaptive cruise control. Um, the, it's actually, when you're only using uh, adaptive cruise control and you are steering manually, then the phantom braking uh, doesn't happen or I mean, not, almost never happens. It's when you use auto steer and adaptive cruise control, basically enabling solar pilot, then the, it tends to happen almost too often sometimes. And it will most, in most cases, it will happen when you have a large vehicle coming towards you. I've seen this so many times. It's it's those trucks, they trigger something in the code, in the in the AI, uh, that breaks. And I complained about this so many times in, in the live stream that why the heck does it just break gently? Because the, the way it does, it will break. Uh, you, you go from, let's say you go from 90 kilometers per hour to 80 or 70. No, 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 no. It's usually, you, they, it does just a, a break kind of sudden, but it doesn't break that hard. It doesn't break to complete stop. No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit, man. Um, and so I remember I was complaining about this and people in live stream, they always say that, well, it's to reduce the, the amount of damage in case you would hit someone oncoming. So yes, I agree. You know, I, actually, when I think about it, that makes sense because by reducing the speed by about 10 kilometers per hour, you have way less kinetic energy and then at the impact, it will severely reduce the, the, the potential damage there. Yes, I agree. But it means that it doesn't go full stop. No, if, if the autopilot or the adaptive cruise control actually went full stop, that, that would be worldwide news, yes. So, okay, let's just continue then. Um, okay, the guy who drove the Tesla, uh, blah, 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 I say, huh? Okay, okay, yes, would say that, yeah, so that basically, the guy with the truck was then ran, uh, the, the, oh, sorry, the truck driver ran into the van driver, yes. Um, so I think that was the news, yeah, not too much about this, I think this is local, uh, local newspaper, local news uh, agency or whatever. Um, so uh, my theory, okay, uh, this is uh, this is just, now we are moving into thin ice here, we are moving into assumptions here because you know, what did they say again? Assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to assume something that uh, the Tesla was probably driving not too fast. Um, it's okay. Uh, let me see. Over here, we have no, no speed cameras uh, at this section. Yes. Um, but I think that the Tesla Model 3 was driving kind of slow-ish, but uh, and also and then the two other guys behind they were a little bit impatient. And again, I'm assuming that truck drivers, uh, the semi semi truck drivers, they sometimes tend to be impatient um, and they drive too close. They don't keep safe distance. They don't keep three second distance. Um, maybe they actually try to, maybe the van driver tried to overtake, but then because of oncoming traffic, he just had to camp behind. Uh, and then, well, actually that, this is the, the last, um, opportunity to overtake for a while because of, after this section, it becomes twisty and you can't really overtake someone unless I guess you have a Tesla and then you can hammer it past some of these slow pokes. Uh, but, uh, so. That's what I'm assuming that, huh, what the, huh, 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 huh. hey, what the heck? What is the distance between these cars? Huh, is this a coincidence? Um, I was about to point out something that people tend to not keep safe distance. <laughs> we might actually just see it now in the Google map here. So my assumption is that the van driver was too close 
was not three seconds. If the if it was three seconds, the van driver would never hit the Tesla. Even if the Tesla slammed on the brakes purposely, it must have been one second. That's my claim. And then again, the truck driver was probably one second behind the van driver again, and that caused the chain reaction. Uh, I mean, the chain collision. Um, so I'm actually going to blame the people behind or partly blame them. Okay, we have to blame autopilot, uh, autopilot also, also, but I'm blaming actually the guys behind. Yeah, based on what I know, based on all these uh, phantom braking I have been experiencing with my Model 3. Um, now, it doesn't happen nearly as, as often with, uh, in, with Optimus Prime. Well, uh, that's AP Har Hardware 1. But on the AP2 cars, it's to the point where it's annoying. It's to the point where Wi-Fi starts to dislike the, the Model 3. So uh, I really hope that Tesla fixes this because, um, well, how they put this? I was, I was gonna make a video to, to demonstrate what happens when the, the car phantom brakes and how, I, I don't really know how they can fix it, but hopefully Tesla will do something about this because it happens all over the world. It gives people a bad impression. It could be dangerous like here. Uh, I mean, you can say that, yes, uh, the problem here was that people behind was not keeping a safe distance, but um, I've been testing lots and lots of EVs and no other EVs I've tested does this phantom braking. The closest one is e-tron following, it's incorrectly following some uh, speed limits and then, but it doesn't brake hard, but it slows down, which is a very annoying. That's the closest thing, but... This, this phantom braking should be stopped. A Tesla should find a fix for it. Yeah, so um, it's like a wake up call now uh, before something more serious happened. It could, it could be, you know, it could be way worse if, if there was a big semi truck or something behind, right behind the Tesla. And then if for some reason it break even harder. But okay, there was one more thing I want to point out by the way, which is that uh, from my experience, uh, I see this again, I drive a lot. So for you guys who don't know, I've been driving Tesla Model S, 240,000 kilometers, 245 by the way. Uh, I drove the Model X, 219,000 kilometers before I sold it, and the Model 3 is now at 60,000 something. So combined over the last seven years, I've driven some 500, 600,000 kilometers. Um, so to back up my claim, okay. Um, I see very often in Norway that truck drivers tend to drive over the yellow line. Um, so when they do that, then the phantom braking occurs at a way higher rate. Uh, but even if they don't do that, the phantom braking still occurs. But when they go over the line, it's way, way higher chance. Uh, so I don't know if the oncoming truck driver was texting over there, but because I see that very often. The, the road over here has a yellow line. It means that it's fairly wide. It needs to be at some, some a given standard before you can have a yellow line. Uh, in Norway, you have also the, the white dotted line. That's when, no wait, um, let me think here. Um, Maybe I, I'm, I'm starting to become old, but uh, in Norway, well, oh yeah, if you have white dotted lines on each side and then no middle divide, um, no middle line, that means that it's, it's fairly narrow. But that means that over here, it's not that narrow, but you see there is almost no road shoulder. That's unfortunately the, the, the typical road quality. This is E6, it's Europe uh, road, Highway 6, and it's the, actually this narrow. So, yeah, uh, if I would put some blame on, on someone, except for ourselves, of course, we will not blame the Tesla, we will blame everyone else, that's how we roll. I would partly br blame the oncoming traffic, but of course we are assuming that the oncoming truck could have been a little bit over the line. We will uh, blame the car behind, because it was too close. We will blame the truck behind that one again, because that truck was too close. And then, of course, we will blame the Tesla. Yes, the Tesla for braking, uh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't do that. Uh, it should be like uh, most other EVs. And uh, the last one we should blame is uh, the news. The news. Uh, Roger M. Svensson. Yes, uh, the journalist. Because this can't be right. Uh, it just no, no. It can't be right. It. it, it, it 
Okay, again, how do I explain this? When, when I got the, the, the phantom braking, every time it occurs, uh, you can just gently tap the brake or you can use the stock or whatever. Or uh, if you, the, it's really easy to regain control of the car. Uh, the journalist claims that there was, it was impossible to gain control over the car until it was in a complete stop. That is not correct. Um, and it means that, I mean, how, how experienced was this Tesla driver? We don't know. I don't know. I haven't tried to find this guy. But if the, if the Tesla driver has been using uh, autopilot for a little while, they should know about phantom braking. And then, <laughs> it's kind of funny, Tesla drivers, they tend to build up a reaction, uh, um, a reflex for every time the, um, the phantom braking occurs. So what actually I do is I gently tap the accelerator or I tap the brake because then you cancel the autopilot and the automatic braking. So there is, in my, in my opinion, there is no chance that the car will brake until a, a complete stop. If I was in Norway, I could try to demonstrate that it will never happen. Uh, I can't do it right now in the MG. But yeah, I think I'm just going to end here. It's just a very long rant as usual. So um, yeah, I guess that's it for now then. I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. And let the comments begin in this. Yeah. <laughs>